All right, so I'm here on the, the Visual Studio Code docs. And again, they referenced in this Markdown extension section, they reference a couple of different extensions that are pretty useful, uh, a theme kit, uh, linting, a couple of different things. But again, they, they mentioned the Markdown shortcut. So I figured uh, I would show you guys that and then we'll just dive into Visual Studio Code. And I'll show you where you can get it. So in the extensions, you can search Markdown uh, shortcuts. And if uh, here it is popped up here on the top and then you just do uh, like these other ones and install and it doesn't pop up for me to install it because I've already got it. So if I scroll down in my installed ones, see so markdown shortcuts there. So let's walk through uh, this little helper file here, this little helper file here uh, to talk about the shortcuts that are available, ones that might be useful, ones that may not be so useful. So the one thing that you're really gonna wanna remember is control M, control M, let's do that real quick, will pull up all the different shortcuts that you have available for this extension. So if you ever forget what one of the shortcuts is, you can pull it up and scroll through this list and then activate it by just pressing enter on the one that you want. So if we want to make um, a piece of text bold, typically we surround it with two asterisks like this and uh, end it with two asterisks as well. So that creates bold. If we wanted to use a shortcut, we could select uh, the word and then do control B. We could also do an empty line and do control B and then type in between uh, the two sets of asterisks that it creates. Both of those create bold text. And this is important, uh, just a general rule. Most of the shortcuts are gonna work on either an empty line or if you select a piece of text, it'll work both ways. So one thing to note, I'm on a Mac right now, and this is Control B. The command to open up this side menu, this side panel, is Command B. So on Windows, both of these, the bold part and then the pulling out the side window, are Control B. So if you're on Windows and you're inside of a Markdown file and you have this inst extension installed, when you do Control B, you'll get bold. If you want to pull out this side menu, you'd have to come over to a different file or just activate it yourself. So it's one thing to note if you're on Windows, since I'm on a Mac, I don't have that problem because they differentiate between command and control. Uh, all right, so that is bold. Let's do the same thing for italics. So control I uh, and I can type in between and there's my, uh, there's my italics text or I could say italics text. Eh, typing is the hardest. I could select that and then do control I and it'll surround that text. So again, doing on an empty line will give you where you can type in the middle. Selecting text or selecting lines will kind of surround that whole thing with lines. So if we want to um, do a link, this one works a little bit differently. So when I click, when I do control L, um, notice it, it pops up this menu and it asks for the link text. So if I want to do James website, and then press enter. Now it asks for the, the link URL. So I'll do my website URL and press enter again. And it'll go ahead and put both of those things in appropriately where they should be. So here's the text that I want to, to be displayed. So here's the text that I want to be displayed and then the URL that I want it to link to. Now the same thing goes for images, uh, except it's control shift L. So James profile and then profile URL, whatever it is. And this is a dummy URL. I didn't type in a real URL, so you get this. But you get the picture, right? So it'll go ahead and generate the same exact thing up here. So it'll generate the same, uh, same as what you see with a link above, except for, again, the difference between uh, an image and a link is just this exclamation here. So it'll go ahead and do that for you. Now that's, that's pretty handy. Um, if you want to do a code block, so you can start with uh, no line selected and do control M, control C, and you can type in your code, whatever that is, and it puts it in this block. You can also, uh, if I select var something equals, if I select that line and then do control M, control C, it'll surround it uh, with the with a three backticks to do a code block. Now, similarly, you can do inline text. So if I wanna do uh, inline code, it will just be control M, control I, and that gives you the single backticks with your code like that. And you could do, this is my inline code, 
and then control M I and var something whatever so that's uh, that's pretty useful if you're doing a lot of code now from here on down all of these have been mapped to actual keyboard shortcuts but not all of the actions that you can take with this extension are already mapped so the ones below are not mapped to shortcuts and to me they don't really need to be I don't really find the use as much for these below but it's up to you guys so if you want to use these and add a shortcut you can do that manually yourself uh, but if I want to add an H1 uh, I can pull up my commands with control M control M come down to H1 type in my H1 if I have an H1 uh, header 1 and some text I can select all of that and do the same thing come down to h1 and it'll go ahead and, and prefix it with this asterisk now it'll do it'll do all h1 through h6 as you can see so h1 through h6 again I just don't see that 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 this part is extremely useful for a shortcut uh, because doing this is not that hard doing this is not that hard if you're doing six of them yeah it's a little more tedious but it's still it's still not worthy enough uh, to, to dedicate a shortcut to it for me. So it's up to you guys. Whatever you think works best, that's fine. Um, now for tables, this one could be uh, worth um, worth coming into uh, a shortcut. So this is kind of up to you guys if you want to do this. Uh, but let's say, um, let's say with no text selected, we want to generate basically a starter table. So if I just want to generate a, a dummy table, I can come in uh, and do add table and it'll give me uh, you know, some dummy data, column A, B, C, and then A1, B1, C1, A2. So it'll spit that out. Then I could just replace these with, um, uh, I don't know, item one, item two, so on and so on, whatever it is I wanna do. Now you can also, um, you can also go ahead and start typing um, basically your table. So if I do item one and then tab item two, tab item three, and then I just come down to line, I'll do row one, item one, tab, row one, item two, tab, row one, item three. Um, so this is me just kind of quickly writing out a table without doing the formatting. And notice over here, it, it doesn't really do anything worthwhile. But if I go ahead and select it uh, and then do uh, control MM to get my add table, it'll go ahead and format that for me. Now this is where this might be pretty useful for you. So you can pretty quickly type out your uh, your headers. And let me undo, see what this looked like originally. Uh, you can type out your headers by uh, doing tabs and then you don't have to do this kind of funky uh, separator thing like this. Um, it, it does all that stuff for you. So it takes the first line as your headers and then it uh, takes the subsequent rows as your rows and tab indented all your tabs have to match up and stuff like that so that one could be pretty useful for you if you're doing a lot of tables and want them to do some of the formatting for you so another one here is uh, a mark through and again like all the other ones you can um, do it on an empty line and then type in between this is a mark through is that a word probably not this is a mark through uh, section and then you could also mark I'm gonna stick with mark through mark through section I could select that entire line and do toggle strike through like that and it'll go ahead and, and strike through that whole thing. Um, again, for me, not, not necessarily uh, handy enough to do a shortcut, but it's there if you want it. Another one, and this, this one just really seems like overkill. So to do a bullet point for me, I just do a hyphen like you would in Word or something like that, hyphen space and then item one, item two, so on and so on. They have a shortcut for it, so control M B it'll do an asterisk for you. Again, that's not, I don't know, it's not, it's not super useful. It might be more useful if you've got uh, text already written out and it's super long and blah, blah, blah. Um, and if you had a shortcut, you could just, um, oh, actually, sorry, it does have a shortcut. <laughs> do the whole line and then control M B. Maybe that's handy enough, but for me, if I had this line written, just go to the start of the line and do a hyphen space and that that's easy enough so I don't really use that one either uh, now if you want to do a, a numbered list same kind of thing uh, control M1 will give you a one dot space and there's your item and maybe if you have a really long piece of text and you select it and do control M1 
it'll go ahead and do that. But again, for me, if I was at the end of this line, I would just go to the front, type in one dot space, and that's easy enough. So for what it's worth, uh, these are the different uh, commands or um, uh, shortcuts that you have available to you. Not all of the shortcuts or commands that are built in are mapped to an actual keyboard shortcut. If you want to map ones that aren't mapped, you can do that manually. I think the way it is by default, it works fine for me because there's several of these like the headers, um, the, the strike through and the bullet points and the um, ordered list items. Those aren't useful enough for me. Some of the ones that could be really handy is the table stuff. So play around with that, see if it really makes sense. But for some of these basic things like code blocks and, and links, links and images, those would be, I can, I can envision those being really helpful. Uh, and then bold and italics and stuff like that. So you guys just play around, see what you think. Let me know. I'm actually curious if anyone's out there using it, how you use it, is it worth it? Do you find it uh, really helpful? Did you try it and, really, and it wasn't so helpful? Really curious. So like I said, I just wanted to give you guys just an introduction on what's available with this shortcut. For what it's worth, it might be handy for you, it might not, but you guys can get exposed to, to what's there.